All right, we might um, we might make a start, and we are recording this webinar, so those who join late can catch up with what's gone in in the beginning um, if they want to watch back uh, to the webinar. So um, welcome, everybody. I first of all uh, would like to acknowledge that we are joining this webinar here in Sydney from the Gadigal lands of the people of the Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging, and I certainly um, um, uh, welcome any First Nations people joining us today on this webinar, uh, and thank you for your continued custodianship uh, of the lands on which we are all meeting uh, across uh, the nation today. So thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Andy Donovan. I'm the Director of Multi-Year Investment, um, and um, I am a uh, Caucasian man uh, in my 50s. I'm wearing a green jacket. Uh, and a brown skibby today. I've got a blurred background with some um, artwork in one of our meeting rooms here at the Australia Council, uh, and I've got uh, graying hair, and I'll be your host today. Uh, and joining me um, is Annette Madden. Hi, everyone. I'm Annette. I'm the head of theatre here at the Australia Council, and I am a Caucasian woman in my 40s. I have um, brown hair down to my shoulders, I'm wearing a green and black pattern dress and I have round dark glasses and the background behind me is white and green, um, also a bit blurred here in one of the um, Australia Council small meeting rooms. Um, thanks for joining us all today. Thank you. And we're also joined uh, by our wonderful interpreter, Claire and Shavoy, who will um, um, be switching between uh, each other as we work our way through uh, the subject matter today here. Uh, and of course, what we're focusing on uh, is the um, two uh, new funding opportunities that we've announced at the Australian Council uh, for Victorian Circus and Physical Theatre. And so what we really want to do today is kind of uh, introduce those, uh, those categories for you so you get a sense, uh, sense of what uh, they're, they're, the purpose of them is. Uh, but also we um, are very keen uh, to hear from you and questions you may have about the sorts of applications you can make to those categories. So uh, in, the, um, in this Zoom webinar, there's, uh, you should see on your screen uh, an area for Q&A. So as we're going through, please uh, don't hesitate to uh, add in um, and type in any questions. Um, and also, if you want to, uh, you're quite welcome in the chat. Uh, just to introduce yourself and say hi to everyone and uh, and even include uh, the country that you're on and, and, and where you're coming from too, by way of acknowledging um, that you're the First Nations people from where you're calling. Um, so please take advantage of the technology uh, and uh, uh, Annette uh, and I will try and take you through uh, these categories and uh, explain uh, what this funding program uh, is trying to do. So Annette, perhaps I could ask you uh, to introduce uh, both of the programs and uh, just do a short description perhaps of uh, what we're aiming to uh, achieve through them. Thanks Andy. Um, look as, as I'm sure you've all um, seen from reading what's on the website there are two categories um, for this particular funding round. Um, one is for individuals and groups and one is for organisations. Um, so it follows a similar kind of framework um, from our arts projects uh, for organisations and individuals groups grants. Um, but obviously this has a very particular lens and, um, you know, is, is I think a real opportunity to, to find um, projects and initiatives and opportunities that will specifically support the Victorian circus and physical theatre sector. So I do, I do want to kind of emphasise that this is a, a very open um, and broad kind of category and really the limits of what can be applied for or can come in as a proposition um, is, is sort of only limited by imagination. So we really do want to encourage applicants to think about how you could use this particular grant category to um, progress your artistic practice, um, you know, have a kind of opportunity to have a, a long-term training regime uh, to, to kind of, you know, trial some new things, try different partnerships, um, work in different ways, develop new work. Um, but, it, but it really is very broad. And, you know, and I think we sometimes get caught up on the word projects and that notion of, okay, it's a project with a specific outcome. 
And of course, that is absolutely a valid um, proposition for this funding category too. It may be that there are other ways you can think about how your, um, your artistic practice could be supported um, with an application to this program as well. So I really would encourage everyone to think about, um, you know, what are what are the different ways that um, you feel your either your own individual practice, your practice as a group, or um, you know, or your practice as as an organisation um, could be, I guess, extended or developed or supported through this process. Um, and that, that it's interesting yep. point I think because these these the two categories are kind of based on the on the um, sort of the normal funding categories we offer for individuals and groups. Uh, and for organisations. So hopefully there's some familiarity in terms of that process if you've applied to the Australia Council before. But I was just curious from your perspective in terms of in terms of the length of a, of, of a project, because they are project grants, but they can be they can sort of be quite long, can't they? Absolutely. So the, the grants themselves can run for um, up to a two year period. So, um, you know, that could, that could mean that you could put a proposition in that speaks to uh, a project that you might want to do multiple development stages of before it reaches a final presentation stage. So you could build multiple stages into the application for a, for a project. Um, or as an individual, you could consider what is a program of activity that, that you as an artist or your collective of artists um, might like to undertake for a year, you know, a year long period. So it could be that you're building um, a, a pattern of regular training and skills development alongside a creative development process. So I think it's about what are those different intersections of the different um, the different ways that you work and the different elements of your artistic practice that you you know you would ideally love to have supported. So you know. The overarching goal of this program is to build capacity, support um, the diversity of, of artistic expression that we know exists in Victoria from the circus and physical theatre community. Um, you know, that spans a huge range of, of um, artistic practice areas, but also different ways of working, different focus groups, different audiences. Um, so I think... I think it's, you know, you, you you could look at it from almost as if, uh, okay, what would, a, what would a fellowship type application look like for myself as an artist? That's something you could consider. Um, as an organisation, you might think, oh, we've always um, really wanted to, to do a, a particular kind of partnership with, um, you know, with an organisation that may sit outside of the circus and physical theatre um, sector. And this is an opportunity to kind of, explore some of those new new possibilities um yeah um, hey i just want to shout out to tracy from the act who's joined us and mentioned uh, where she's uh, coming to us on the chat also tom uh, and jez as well so look if you've got some questions please uh, use that question and answer functionality of this uh, of this system um the other thing i wanted to um just mention it too was that that um the caps are the caps for the funding that you can apply for is slightly higher than, than sort of the normal categories we would offer. Um, what's the reasoning behind that? Yes. So essentially in the organisational category, you can apply to for up to 150,000 and in the individuals and groups category, it's 80,000. And really, I guess we wanted to, again, um, have the facility to support significant projects and to support activity over time. Um, you know, we know that uh, coming out of COVID, um, you know, Victoria was incredibly hard hit in that sense. And there hasn't been the opportunity to, to potentially have that kind of ongoing um, creative practice in the ways that we would have pre-COVID. Um, so we also wanted to make sure that there was significant investment and that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that sense of applying and reapplying and reapplying for um, different stages necessarily of a project, that there was capacity within this program to really put together a kind of suite of activity to, to sustain and support over a period of time. So that increased um, limit, uh, you know, really we hope can facilitate um, that type of activity and, and have, have real impact for the sector in Victoria. 
um, you know, we do have a considerable considerable budget for this allocation. So, so we're saying be ambitious and we're saying, you know, really kind of um, ask for what you need. We know that the sector generally, you know, are always trying to do their very best on a shoestring and we want this to be an opportunity for artists to say, okay, I really, this is the program of activity and this is what it really costs. And, um, and we want to be able to kind of facilitate that in a meaningful way. Perfect. We've got some um, questions coming in. Um, so Mel is asking uh, how much funding is available in each category. So perhaps just repeat, uh, repeat that for us, Annette. Yeah, look, we I guess I guess this feeds into a into a bigger comment about um, the suite of activity, you know, that we intend to undertake over the next couple of years to support the Victorian circus and physical theatre sector. So, you know, this this funding program is is one element. And for us, it's really been it's really a mechanism to uh, to as quickly as we can within the processes that we have get money flowing to the circus and physical theatre sector in Victoria to support activity, to reactivate, to help that uh, capacity building and growth into the future and, and to build sustainability into the sector going forward. So uh, this is one of a number of initiatives that we anticipate will roll out over the next couple of years. Um, we have a, an envelope of funding of a approximately $2.4 million, not specifically for this program, but for a, a, a whole strategy to support the Victorian circus and physical theatre sector over from 2022 this year, 23 and 24. So, um, you know, we're hoping that we can as best as possible meet the demand that comes through in this, uh, in this funding round. And it will also help inform you know, what we need to do next. Um, and whether, you know, we we run another round exactly like this into the future or we hear the feedback, you know, in response to this particular program and we need to refine or, you know, or, or kind of go in a particular direction to support the sector's needs. Um, alongside this funding program, you may have seen that we've announced that we will be convening a circus and physical theatre advisory group. And we hope that that group will, alongside sector consultation, that we will be able to uh, generate strategic initiatives alongside funding programs like this that are able to support the sector um, in, in maybe some very targeted ways. Uh, we intend to undertake a a scan of the sector and, and to kind of really pull all the information together and understand what the current needs and challenges um, and opportunities are and, and kind of kind of work from there. Terrific. The questions are coming thick and fast, which is good. Um, are multi-year projects a preferable goal? Not necessarily. I think we just... Um, I mean, ultimately, we want you to feel like this category can respond to what your needs are. So if your needs are a very specific, discrete project that's for a, for a particular period of time, then that's fine. Um, it, you know, you won't, you won't be disadvantaged for, for submitting in that way. I guess we just want to make sure that people are aware that you can, you know, apply for, for a multi-year project or for a project that happens over, over a number of period, you know, a, a kind of um, set period of time of your deciding. So really it's about what, you know, what you, what the sector needs, um, you know, where, where your artistic ambition lies, um, where you think support and capacity building can be most meaningful. So I think it's not about what we want. It's, genuinely about us trying to be as responsive as we can to the sector and and sort of providing an open framework for uh, for applications to speak to that. Terrific and thanks for that question Tom. Um, Jeremy asks um, could this grant be used for infrastructure, sets or props? Um, absolutely I think that you know uh, the the kind of hard infrastructure of, of making work, creating work, of training, those things are important. We know that, um, you know, for, for the circus and physical theatre sector, uh, we know that space is 
is a challenge. Um, we know that it's a challenge in Victoria and, and we understand that. We know that there's no easy or quick fix to that too. Um, and I guess to that end, I did just want to, to make a comment about, uh, you know, if as you're working through an application, one of the challenges that you're facing is, I'm not sure exactly where we, can, we will be able to rehearse this at a particular time or, or where the, um, where the uh, outcome will necessarily take place. It's okay to, to make an indication in the application with a TBC attached to it. I think we will be quite generous and liberal in our thinking around co-investment but also confirmed partners on this um, on this funding round, because we acknowledge, you know, this this there's not a huge lead time in terms of when this uh, when this program has gone out into the public domain and when the closing date is, and we know that there are those challenges in Victoria around access to to space. So it's okay to list a venue uh, and have it be a TBC at this point in time. You know, we obviously hope that into the future there will be um, access to appropriate spaces as soon as possible, but I don't want that to be a kind of um, a barrier for people in terms of making the application. And I would say that while in a, in a normal project round, we would say that co-investment is really critical in terms of viability for the project, this again, this is a slightly different scenario where the ambition is to get support and you know, funds flowing to activate the circus and physical theatre sector again in Victoria. So it's, you know, we're going to be less concerned about that kind of co-investment piece than maybe it would be in a regular assessment round. So um, you know, it's viable for for a project to kind of come in that is majority funded by the Australia Council by this particular fund. And I also really want to encourage. Um, people to make sure that in your budgets you are articulating the true cost to artists and to, you know, crew and to all your partners who are working on a project. Um, don't put your time in kind, put your time into the budget because you should be getting paid appropriately at, you know, award rates for the contributions that you will make to these types of projects. Great. Um, a quick question that Alice is asking, which is, what's the longest a project can be? So there's a so there's a two year time frame in relation to the grants themselves. So essentially, the the big the start date and the end date needs to be the maximum is a two year period. Right. Thank you. Tracy's asked a really interesting question. So um, she obviously works in a small town. We have a decent sized cohort of circus and physical theatre artists. If individuals groups apply separately to us as an organisation, might this compromise the success or assessment of either one, uh, given in such a sort of small geographical location, I guess, is, is, is what Tracy's interested in. Um, we will be discussing the grants with each other, so they'll be talking to each other about um, what they're going to submit uh, to make sure they're in the best position. So I just would be keen to know, I guess, it's that, I guess it's what that level of <laughs> competition is from a small um, um, like, you know, sort of regional location? Yeah, well, that's a really great question. Um, the organisation category will be assessed separately from the individuals and groups category. So um, they, are, they are their own uh, assessment process in that sense. Um, but you, I guess it depends on what the activity is. Uh, I don't think you would want to to submit app duplicate applications, which were for the same, uh, for, for exactly the same activity or for exactly the same part of the activity. So, uh, you know, I guess there's a scenario where the organization, you know, I'm totally just making this up, but where the organization could apply for a program to facilitate work by local artists. Um, and that may that application may speak to the kind of uh, the platform itself or the kind of program that you're setting up in which to you know and how you might resource that element of it. Um, the applicant, the individuals themselves could then apply for the creation of the work. So there could be a scenario where the two work in tandem together, but you would want to make sure that they weren't that that those two different grants or series of grants weren't asking for the 
the same part of the same activity because then it would be a doubling up of funding and we would do a cross-referencing in that in that respect to make sure that we weren't essentially funding the same part of the same activity twice right so it probably is a good a good thing that um that you're talking to each other in the town to make sure that you've got those distinct distinctly different activities that you're applying for and i think just on that andy you know obviously i think a question generally has been you know can can an artist or can an individual be or an organization be on multiple applications so um you know you might submit an application yourself as the lead uh, on on a project um it's then totally fine for that individual to be uh, a collaborator on another project um but it would be that the the lead applicant on those different uh on those different applications would need to be different um and similarly, you know, an organisation may put in an application themselves, they could still be a partner on another ap application, um, but you would just need to be strategic about how you approach that. You, you obviously wouldn't, wouldn't want to put your, you know, in terms of the, the different types of activities that you might be putting yourself forward for, you wouldn't want to do that in a way where you were competing with yourself. Yeah, terrific. Um, another question from uh, Lourdes, I hope I'm saying, uh, pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, can we apply for this round if we were successful in receiving a grant from the Australia Council uh, for the Arts and we haven't acquitted yet? Oh, I can answer this one. Um, thank you. Um, so look, as long as, the, as long as the acquittal is not outstanding, so overdue, um, you can apply, even though you may have a project that's currently in progress. Um, the only time you can't well, the only time you're not eligible to apply is if we actually have, uh, if that report is 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 long overdue, uh, and we haven't received the report from you yet. So, uh, absolutely fine to apply if you've already um, got a grant. Um, so, uh, uh, Chiara is has asked a question: Do the projects or outcomes have to physically take place in Victoria, and or just benefit Victorian artists? That depends a little bit on who the applicant is. So if you are a Victorian applicant, then you can apply for activity that takes place in Victoria, nationally or internationally. Um, if you are an applicant from outside of Victoria, then we would need to see a demonstration of how, how the activity, and this would need to be articulated in the application, how the activity benefits the circus and physical theatre sector in Victoria. So, you know, from an organisation, from the organisation category, that would require you to be in partnership with a Victorian organisation. So, uh, you know, or, or similarly, if you're an individual but applying from outside of Victoria, you know, who are you working with in Victoria that supports the case around how this activity will you know, have some kind of benefit to the sector in Victoria. Great, thank you. Um, Henrietta is asking, would the creation of a circus space be an eligible project? I don't see why not. I mean, this is an opportunity to, to set up, uh, you know, some models and trial some models that could support greater sustainability in the sector going forward. So I think again, it's about the framing of that. You know, how what what would it mean to to set up, uh, you know, a training space or a, you know a physical space, and what would the impact of that be um, for for the sector going forward? So I think um, you know we're we're really happy to have um, obviously one on one conversations with anyone who wants to talk about a specific, um, you know, framing. You know how you're thinking about um, talking about. A proposition or an application, um, we can do that certainly um, going forward. But you know, again, this is a broad category. Um, you know, it isn't entirely up to to you, the sector, to apply for what the sector needs right now. Right. Um, there's a couple of questions um, from Kirsty and. Uh, Devon, there are a little bit around timing. Um, so it's about what can the funding be used for a project this year and sort of what's the earliest that funding activ activities would be able to commence after the assessment of these um, applications. So the applications close on the 19th of July and the activity can begin on the 1st of October this year. 
So that's not, you know, that's not to say that a that a project couldn't begin. A project could be already in process, but you could only apply for the portion of it that would happen after the 1st of October. So, um, you know, sometimes we, we see applications that say, well, we've done stage one of this development um, and that happened in or that will happen in September. We're not applying for that. What we're applying for is stage two, which will happen in November or early next year. So it's okay to reference um, parts of activity that may have already happened, but it's really important to be clear about the part that you're applying for um, and that that, um, in order to be eligible, would need to start after the, the, the 1st of October. Great. Thanks, Annette. And Tiara's got another question, and I think I can answer this one. Are artists still able to apply for multiple individual projects? And I think it comes back to a point that Annette made earlier, which is which is really, if the, pro if the projects are different, um, I don't think that should be an issue, should it, Annette? No. So you can't yes, yeah, so you can apply um, for um, for different for different projects within that within that round. Um, Tom uh, has also asked this question. So should a non-Victorian company apply for funding to directly assist Victorian circus students, artists, and or venue providers make sure that every dollar of the grant goes to Vic artists, or should a loading for administration staff hours be added to the budget? Um, I think I get that question. So it's about, um, so it's a non-Victorian applicant, so let's say it might be a company, um, uh, applying to directly assist Vic, Vic, um, artists in Victoria. Um, um, but it, I guess it is our expectation that it, all of the money goes to Victoria or can there, there can be some um, uh, loading or sort of administration fee for the non-Victorian company. Yeah, look, I think obviously if you're, a Victor if you're a company that's applying from outside of Victoria, then it has to be in partnership with a Victorian organisation. So, um, so we would expect, I think, then to see, you know, a really robust budget that spoke to all the different, all the different costs involved. Obviously, if you're an, if you're an organisation that's not in Victoria, but you're delivering, then there will be costs associated with that. Ultimately, I think it's it's less about thinking about every dollar being spent in Victoria and more about how does the activity proposed impact support build capacity um, you know help help kind of future sustainability of the sector in Victoria. So I think it's it's just it's just a little bit about the perspective on that um, you know and and kind of making a, a common sense call about what what's reasonable in terms of um, where that where that budget is being allocated. Thanks, Annette. Um, and Tom says, thank you too. Um, the, um, I guess I just wanted to touch, we've, we, you, you spoke a little bit about it before, um, just around, I suppose, expectations around artist fees. Uh, so this is a two part question from me to you. So one is, um, I guess, just to, to talk a little bit more about what the expectations around, around artist fees and, and making sure people are getting paid properly. And the other one is just around, um, obviously, um, through the normal programs, we expect uh, when there's a large grant amount asked, a significant amount of co-funding. Um, and I think we're sort of we're sort of being a bit more relaxed about that. So perhaps you could just talk a little bit more about those two points and then. Great. Thanks, Andy. You look on the first point. Um, first and foremost, we want to see artists being paid properly for their work. Um, and we would really encourage you to to when you're building the budget, be really clear about what people are being paid. Uh, put lots of detail in the budget because the more detail there is, the less questions that peers will have about how you've arrived at those figures. Um, you know, indicate which award rates you are using or how you've calculated those, um, those artist fees so that there are no questions about um, whether people are being paid at appropriate rates. Um, the other thing we see happen a lot and I really want to, to kind of shift away from is artists putting their own time as an in-kind contribution and sometimes that will be that will be you know put in as a way to say oh well that's a kind of co-funding uh you know I, I'm bringing some co-funding to the table by giving my time for free um and and we just really want to encourage people to move away from that mentality because 
you are working, your work is valid, it's important, and you should be paid for it. So please just really, really, when you're building these budgets, um, ask for advice, ring an artist services officer and talk it through with them. They will give you wonderful advice in terms of how to be super clear in your budget. Um, and, and, and that kind of, um, you know, asking for what you need. You know, we know that there is a that there is a scarcity of funding. We know that. And we know that it's really hard. And we know that artists have done it supremely tough over the last couple of years on the back of a long time of, of, of doing a lot of work for free. So I guess what we're saying is, you know, there is there is significant budget here in this program. Ask for what you genuinely need to do the work, to do it properly, to give yourself the right amount of time, you know, to do the work properly. Don't don't kind of go, oh, we would really, we would really love five weeks rehearsal, but actually we're only going to ask for three because we think that's, you know, we can bring the budget down a bit. If you need five weeks, if that's what the work needs, then ask for five weeks. Um, and then I guess on Andy's point in relation to the co-funding, as I mentioned before, we would, you know, we would normally expect to see a fairly high level of co-funding um, in project applications um, because that supports the viability of a project. Um, as Andy said, this is a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a different scenario where the intention is to really kind of facilitate funding to the sector in order to reactivate and get work happening and to enable collaboration and to enable um, the sector to, to be actively making work, training again, you know, um, you know, after a, a really, really difficult period where physical activity was, was just not possible, particularly in Victoria. So we will be a little bit relaxed in relation to that part of the viability criteria. We won't be expecting you to have three partners with confirmed, um, you know, confirmed kind of co-funding commitments articulated in the budget. It's okay to propose a project that has uh, the Australia Council as the key funder for this, um, you know, and, and, and you might have partners that might be able to provide something in kind, whether, that, whether that's, um, you know, uh, support for, um, you know, some, some equipment to, you know, that can be borrowed in kind, or it might be a, a rehearsal venue in kind or at a reduced rate. But I don't, again, we don't want people to be kind of hung up on those elements. The important thing is about facilitating and reactivating um, this part of the sector in Victoria going forward. Right. Thanks, Annette. I've also just dropped in some links into the chat for people, which are sort of the direct links to those um, project descriptions, but also a direct link to the contact us area of our website where you can um, get directly in contact with our um, colleagues in our artist services area uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> so there's no more questions uh, directly from um, people. So um, I guess I'm just doing a last shout out if you've got that last burning question, um, please get it in because we'll probably be wrapping up um, reasonably shortly. Um, I did just wanna to mention too that we um, are working quite um, closely with our colleagues at um, Creative Victoria as well, um, um, sort of um, through some of the some of the issues around the the, the circus um, and physical theatre area. So, um, just wanted to get that message out to you as well that um, that we are sort of in pretty close contact with them as we as we work through the, this sort of program. But this particular these two particular categories will be um, run through the Australia Council and assessed um, through our um, normal. Um, uh, processes here. So um, Mel has just asked, how will they be assessed, Annette? So these grants will be assessed uh, by peer assessment. So the same process that we go through when we assess um, the arts projects um, general categories. Um, obviously, we're, we'll be looking for to curate panels which uh, who come with uh, specific physical theatre and circus expertise, um, you know, we will, we will obviously be managing, you know, conflicts of interest and making sure that um, we're able to, cu to curate and bring together a panel who can be uh, impartial, who don't have applications in themselves, et cetera. So, um, you know, we'll work towards that in the coming months, but essentially it will be a peer assessed process. Um, oh, the lights have gone out here. I'm not moving enough. Um, and, um, I don't know how to turn them back on. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, essentially it will it will run through the same rigorous peer assessment process um, as all of our uh, public um, publicly advertised grants. All the we, can still, now. we can still see you, Annette. So okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, that, we don't have any more questions in the uh, question and answer box. I'll just check in the chat box. No, we're fine in there too. Um, so look, obviously, if you have more questions, uh, there's that contact us link there, but you can also find that on our website to, um, to register an online inquiry with our artist services team who are always waiting um, to, uh, to answer these inquiries. Um, and of course, if you, um, um, uh, you, you sort of, um, I guess the, um, the process really is to sort of go through that um, method of inquiries uh, first, uh, and then um, if there's is if there's something they can't answer, they will obviously direct it on to Annette um, for further um, advice. Um, there's just one last question here. Excellent work, um, Ciara. Are circus festivals events able to apply? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Um, again, as long as they meet the criteria in relation to either being a Victorian applicant or in partnership if they're from outside of Victoria. But certainly, this, you know, this can, the, the, the applicant can be, you know, can, as, as the category is broad, so can, you know, who the applicants can be. We're not def defining that it's specifically only, you know, um, artists who can apply or events, um, festivals, um, you know, any of those things are absolutely valid. It's just about, again, how you articulate the, um, the impact that it will have for, for this part of the sector in Victoria. Terrific. Um, and just a reminder too, for those that may have arrived uh, to the webinar a bit late, uh, the, the webinar has been recorded, so it will be available on our website shortly and um, you can um, catch up on what happened in the first few minutes if you missed those. Um, um, and uh, and again, of course, if you uh, miss some of the uh, content, you can watch the whole thing through if you so desire. Um, uh, and please let people know uh, who weren't able to attend that they, they'll be able to see that recording on our website too if they uh, are interested in some information on these categories. So I think that's probably um, all we need to, um, to let you know about. Uh, any last words, Annette, or, is it, or is it, uh, have you got enough out of us? <laughs> No, look, um, it's it's been really great to be able to talk about these initiatives and I think we're really excited about um, the potential and the opportunities. So um, really looking forward to seeing what comes through and, and as Andy said, we're here to answer any questions um, before the deadline. So please reach out. Great. Thanks, Annette. Uh, thank you to our um, intrepid interpreters as well for their uh, for keeping up with us as we uh, went through these um, um, programs uh, and thank you all for joining us uh, it was great that you could be with us uh, and uh, hopefully we will uh, see wonderful applications coming in uh, in uh, uh, later in July thanks very much everyone have a good afternoon or morning wherever you are cheers thank you goodbye <laughs>